host Sean Lennon here out of the Fight League Report. Make sure to check us out, fightleague.com. We've got a lot of great articles on all the fighters we're interviewing and more. A lot of great stories on there. And also follow Fight League on YouTube for all our great content. And right now we are talking to undefeated Michigan Light Heavyweight Pro Cody Rundage on the Fight Report. And Cody will be taking on William Knight, Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series, September 1st, ESPN Plus. It is going to be a very exciting night. And uh, Contender Series has been rolling. We have had, you know, lots of winners so far. It's been an exciting time, especially, you know, everything that's going on. So recap what happened to you last. Obviously, you had a big fight back in February. You defeated Eric Lozano, first round, armbar, triangle choke. And now you're 5-0. and Train at Scorpion in the fighting system. So welcome back on the show, Cody. Hope everything is well with you. Yeah, everything's great, man. We, I've had some big changes kind of in the last uh, two and a half, three months. I actually moved out to Colorado. Uh, started training at Factory X full time um, right. in preparation for this fight. Yeah, so that's been different, you know, training at Elevation. Uh, and then me and my wife actually found out that we we're expecting a baby girl in uh, late February. So we've had some pretty big changes going on, uh, some life changing stuff. And yeah, I'm excited, man. It's coming. You know, this fight camp seemed like a long time. Like you said, I haven't fought since February. Um, and I'm a guy that likes to stay super active. So seven months in between fights is pretty foreign to me. Uh, I'm excited to get back in there and compete. Yeah, definitely. Congratulations on uh, announcing uh, a new addition to your family. And I wish you both the best. Thank uh, you. Thank you. you know, talk- Talk about getting a call to fight on Contender Series. I mean, how much does opportunity mean to you during these challenging times? We're all going through it. And, uh, you know, like you said, you had to take a pause, unfortunately, with your fight career, which was really on a roll. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, I, I definitely was planning on being on Contender this summer. Uh, I actually got the call in March. Um, so, you know, I, I don't like to take a lot of time between fights. I try to fight typically once every two months, you know, which isn't. I don't think common in the sport. I think a lot of people, you know, for weight cuts or whatever reason, take more time. I like to stay super active. Uh, so it was, I said, yes, to the contender fight's a big deal. You know, you change your life. You can provide for your family. You know, it gives you a route to really make it a career. Um, but it's been tough. Yeah. Seven months in between fight is not something I like to do, especially like you said, my career was really rolling, kind of doing what I wanted to do in my first year as a pro. Uh, I went five and zero, oh, and then I haven't fought since. So, uh, that's been a struggle. I'm a guy that likes to stay busy. I don't do well, like sitting on the sideline and stuff, but you know, it's been a blessing in the skies too. I've got a lot better. I've made some huge improvements. Uh, I'm so new to the sport, uh, that it's easy to pick things up and get better. And so in that seven month period, you know, I've been training with guys like Anthony Smith, Dustin Jacoby, just a bunch of killers out here. So I, I think I'm looking forward to showing kind of my new, my new skills, my new tools that I have. But, yeah, it's been tough. I know it's been tough for a lot of people. I've been fortunate. I've had my gym open. I've, I've been able to know, like, hey, here's a date and a time and a place that you're going to be able to fight. I know a lot of my teammates are struggling with not having that. That's tough to stay motivated. It's tough to stay training when you don't know when your next fight's going to be. Definitely. I mean, you're fighting William Knight. He's an impressive guy, just like you. Big knockouts uh, yeah, sure. like you. So what's the game plan? Yeah, William's uh, he's a great fighter. You know, he's won on Contender Series. He's got to finish on there. I think, like you said, I think we're super similar. I think we're both big, strong guys. We both kind of try to impose our will. We both have good wrestling. Uh, both are very athletic. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, they always say styles make fights, and we have the same style. So it's going to be a clash. Yeah, it's a good matchup. I think it's going to be whoever can break the other person's will, which that's always what fighting is. But in this matchup especially, you know, who can implement the game plan? Because we both have the same game plan. Uh, push pace, take the guy down, and dominate on the ground whether it's ground and pound or submission. And so when you both have, want to do the same thing and you both know what you want to do, uh, the fight can be super interesting. So we'll see. You know, And Contender Series is just a different environment. You, know, you see people go out there and do things they might never do in, a, in their actual fight career because they want that contract so bad. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. He's been on there before. You know, he knows what the, what the deal is. You know, everyone says, like, oh, it's just another fight. It's not just another fight. You know, it's good to have that mentality and you don't want to come outside yourself. But I think it's silly when people say that because it's not, you know, you're fighting to change your life. You're fighting to achieve your, your goals and your dreams to get the biggest organization in the world. So I'm not one of those people that thinks, oh, it's just another fight. It's not. It's a bigger right. fight. It's a bigger opportunity. Yeah. You know, you got to stay focused and you can't come outside yourself. But at the same time, uh, you know, you got to enjoy the moment and realize that you're doing something not a lot of people get to do. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Scorpion Fight System really offers, you know, their fighters elite training. So talk about how far you've come since you were there 
And then, of course, you know, having the opportunity to go out to Colorado and just, you know, fine-tuning everything, I would assume, at this point, uh, when yeah. you're training with, you know, with the guys like Anthony Smith and, uh, you know, so forth. Scorpion Fighting Systems where I got my start, and they really built me up to where I was. And, uh, yeah, I learned a ton from there. It's, my, it's where I got my base for MMA. Uh, it's where I felt, met my wife. It's where, you know, I have a ton of family and friends there. And, and you know, it's always going to be home. Um, but, at, you know, going to Factory X, you know, we moved out here permanently. We, we made the move. I got a whole camp out here. And uh, it's the same thing. You know, I got friends and family out here. They support me. Uh, they opened me with welcome – or they welcomed me with open arms. There was never any – uh, adjust, adjusting in terms of fitting in with the team or anything like that. It was an instant click with Coach Mark and uh, the rest of my team out here. So it's been good, you know, and it's not, I'm not even fine tuning. I'm still picking up new things all the time. Uh, sure. I've only been training, you know, just under three years, and I'm not at the point where I'm fine tuning things. You know, in fight camp, sure, I'll fine tune some things, but I'm still picking up new things every day. I'm learning new things all the time, uh, improving my weaknesses, and, and, and it's exciting. You know, it's exciting when you still have a lot to learn and every day you go in, you're learning new things and, and every day you're, you're adding to your arsenal. So <clears throat> I'm at that point where I'm still learning. I still show up to the gym every day and there's amateurs on our team out here that know more than I do and they're teaching me things. So it's cool. It's cool for me. And I'm excited about the move just because like I'm training with the best guys in the world. And I know when I'm sparring with those guys and when I'm taking my lumps from those guys, fight night is going to be easy. So that's a good feeling. Definitely glad the change uh, worked out for you. And of course, you know, having to move everything over there that had to been challenging. You know, Amanda, you know, obviously your wife is, is making, you know, had to make a, a trend to make, make the travel with you and the change with you. Obviously, but, you know, she's pregnant right now. And I know yeah. she's you know, very dedicated. You know, we always see her in your corner and your teammates' corners. But of course, and now she has to take a break from that. So would that be also uh, something different as well? Oh, for sure. Like, uh, uh, so we didn't know we were pregnant until we got here the day our first official day in Colorado we figured out we were pregnant and uh, she was actually getting UFC offers at the time so it was kind of like we were trying so we were excited but we were also like well damn this is kind of you know rough timing for what's going on we made the move in a week you know we still have our house in Michigan we ended up renting that out to some of our teammates and uh, packed up a budget truck drove 22 hours down here and then you know kind of changed our whole lives in a week's time uh, just because we felt like it was the move to make in terms of, uh, you know, I didn't want to look back at this fight and be like, I didn't exhaust every source that I had to, to be successful. Uh, but yeah, it was super tough. It's tough being away from family with her being pregnant and stuff. And then kind of going through that, just uh, husband and wife, you know, we're, we're missing our, my in-laws and, and my parents and, and that's different and difficult. And I know she struggles with that, but like you said, yeah, she's a workhorse. She's a killer. Like she's gonna, we're gonna have this baby and she'll be back in, on the scene. You know, she's she's not done. She's already told me, you know, after we have this baby, I want to compete again. So I'm excited for that. You know, she pushes me super hard. Uh, this will be the first fight. She's not in my corner. So that's going to be different, different. And there's no fans. So she won't even be in attendance. And uh, I think that'll be a struggle at first. I think it'll be something that I got to get used to a little bit, especially on fight day. I'm a nervous fighter. Typically I, on fight day, I'm, I get pretty nervous. So she's always there to kind of calm me down. So it'll be interesting without her there how I'll deal with that, you know. But I got full faith in, in Coach Mark and uh, Anthony Smith's gonna be cornering me, so I got full faith in those guys to kind of keep me my head in the game and, and you know really help me shine, give me my best performance uh, Tuesday night. Definitely, and you mentioned that, I mean, Anthony Smith in your corner. You're gonna be looking at his fight closely, of course, against Ratchet this uh, uh, Saturday as well. So just talk about you know having uh, him. To pick, you know, from this guy's been fighting since the Strike Force days. Oh, you know, he's sure. a real a veteran of the of the game, and and you know, also a very articulate uh, person as well. As we've seen as him as a commentator role. Yeah. You know, really able to uh, you know bring out the best in terms of uh, analyzing. For sure, for sure, he's a great dude, and uh, he's really taking me under his wing. It's not just that he's a great fighter, and I can pick his brain on on things. I can ask him whatever, and you know, we're we're very comfortable with each other. We get along very well. But just seeing the way he interacts with his kids and. And his wife and the way he is just as a man is something that I think I've taken a lot from and, and kind of just how to carry yourself. Like you said, he's he's very articulate. He's very intelligent. And I think sometimes in this sport, people have this idea that you're just a bunch of big, scary dudes who go beat the crap out of each other every Saturday. And, you know, he kind of represents the sport in the way that I want to rep represent the sport. You know, I, I want to be the guy that does commentating. I want to be the guy that, you know, has his own podcast and, and just all those sort of things. So it's really cool to be able to bounce ideas off him and just kind of see the, the path that he took 
because it's something that, yeah, in the future, I want to kind of follow that, that role that he's done, you know. And how do you feel about the Contender Series? You know, once you're there under the lights, you know, once the cameras turn on, you're not only your opponent, but you're competing against other fighters for that contract. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I tell Bobby, I think it's almost like a different sport. You see people go out there and, like I said earlier, they're just doing crazy things they never do. Um, and I, I've been telling you know, in all my interviews, I've been saying, you got to stay with inside yourself. you got to just uh, stick to your game plan, have confidence in that. But at the same time, like, who knows? I might get in there and I might just go nuts and, and do something that's out of character. You know, you tell yourself you're not supposed to, you're not going to. But when you're under the lights and, and you're trying to get a contract, you're trying to change your life, who knows what will happen, you know. So I think trying to stay focused and, and not get too crazy because at the end of the day, you got to win. If you don't win, you're not getting the contract typically, you know. Crazy things have happened, but I don't see you getting the contract if you don't win. So you got to win, and then uh, you got to be impressive doing it. But win first, you know. That's I'm five and zero. It's a great event for me, just in terms of exposure, uh, fighting at the higher level, being in front of those guys. I mean, I'll, if I win, I'll be six and zero. You know, so even at six and zero, there's no guarantee you get a contract. They might say you need to go get some more fights, but it, at least you're in their name or in their mind. At least you're on their list, right? You're on the short list, and. With how crazy everything is right now, that could mean a call up in the next two months. You know, people are right. getting fights, and and so I think just go out there and and, and get the win and be impressive and, and try to enjoy what you're doing and not get overwhelmed. I think you know I, I've never fought on a stage quite like this, mm-hmm. but uh, you know I've competed at national the national tournament for wrestling. I've I've competed in big events with with high pressure situations. You know I fought for my first pro title when I was three and zero. So I've I've been in uh, big events. Um, nothing quite like this. Cause like I said, this is different. It, it is. Nobody will say it, but it is, it's a different event. It's a different fight than you've ever fought before. It's a different fight than even if you're in the UFC. Um, you know, there's a different kind of pressure with that. But, uh, Anthony told me this, so I was struggling. I was like, Hey man, I don't know. I got to do this. I got to do this. He's like, listen, all you need to do is every situation you get in, just win the small battles. So if you get on top, control the position. If you're on the feet, control the position, just win the small battles. And at the end of the day, that'll be a win. So, you know, I've been really trying to do that when I'm, I do a lot of visualization, I've been trying to focus on just winning the small battles when I visualize and, and, uh, and expecting some things that might, you know, might not go my way. Like you might have an adrenaline dump. You probably will. You're probably going to have an adrenaline dump. How are you going to deal with that? I think people go in there not expecting everything to be sunshine and roses. And then when it isn't, you know, that's trouble. So I've been, I've been, uh, visualizing and I'm prepared physically for sure. Definitely. And what can we expect on September 1st? You know, obviously the fans won't be in attendance, but I'm sure everybody back home in Michigan is watching your, your teammates at SFS and also your your new teammates at the uh, uh, Factory X Mood Die. So how do you plan on getting them, all of them on their feet at home, you know, rather than sh- in the arena? For sure, for sure. I got a lot of support. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be kind of a grindy fight. I'm a grinder. He's a grinder. But I think my cardio, my pace, uh, my pressure is just going to be a little bit too much. I think I'll sub him end of the second round, early third. Uh, I think the later rounds, I think he's tough. I think he's durable, but I think my pressure and my pace, my cardio is just going to be a little bit too much in the later rounds. Uh, and I definitely think I get the submission finish. I think that's where my biggest advantage over him is, is, is in the jujitsu area. Definitely. We're looking forward to the exciting fight. And Cody, we thank you again, taking time to be on the fight point. If there's anyone you'd like to thank, go ahead. Uh, I want to thank my wife. I always thank her. She's a killer. You know, she supports me. It's not an easy life that we have. Uh, but she's the most supportive, and she's pregnant. She still puts up with me, so, you know, I'm happy to have her. And then Landau Performance, they're my strength and conditioning. You know, they've really got me right in these 10 weeks. Uh, you know, elevation's not easy to adjust to, but I feel like I've really made that adjustment well. And then just all my teammates over at Factory X, uh, you know, they've really pushed me and, and prepared me well for this camp. I feel strong going into into my fight. So, uh, you know, it's good when you have that confidence. Definitely. Well, Cody Brunage. Appreciate you taking time to be on the fight board. Everybody check out your upcoming fight against William Knight. Dana White, Tuesday Contender Series, September 1st, ESPN+. Plus. We are excited to see you finally, you know, get on that big stage and, uh, you know, show us what you got because it's going to be, uh, you know, a great night of fights. Obviously, there isn't any UFC that weekend either, so I think that's also oh, wow. pretty exciting as well. <laughs> yeah. For well, sure, we're going sure. off a weekend, but there's no, there's no UFC, rather. That's what I meant. So okay. I think that's going to be really exciting that for fans, you know, coming off that Labor Day week, uh, you know, getting to that Labor Day weekend. So for sure, for appreciate sure. you again being on the show, and uh, best of luck. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye.